remember it was a big deal after school. This goes back, I don't remember, sometime in the 60s. We used to come home from school and watch Barnabas. I remember watching it a lot when it was on. I just It was so, so long ago that I can't really remember, but it was interesting. And it was spooky. I used to watch. It's true. Remember Barnaby Con or Barnabas Collins? It's not like the modern-day soap operas you see on TV now. It was just so original in itself. Now, after school, I used to watch where the action is with Paul Revere and the Raiders and girls in oh, bikinis. Oh, Bob, you but would. Lisa, you love that show. How come? We love... Well, you know what it was about Dark Shadows? As a teenager, you could go home and watch it and feel like you were doing something a little naughty, maybe. Experimenting <laughs> with something maybe you weren't supposed to be doing. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's true, but, you know, it's, th what, 3.30 in the afternoon, it's on television. Why could your parents do nothing? Dark shadow guilt, and right here. And we all loved Barnabas. That was the secret to it all. Well, Collinwood was filled with vampires, ghosts, and all sorts of weird characters. As soaps go, it was one unlike anything which came before it. And nothing since has been quite the same. This is no ordinary night at Collinwood. There never was an ordinary night at the Collinwood estate. Dark Shadows prided itself on being extraordinary, and it certainly was that. Dark Shadows was very unique. It was a soap opera that shouldn't have worked. But work, it did. From 1966 through 1971, the series attracted a loyal following of fans who tuned in to be horrified daily. They saw people rise from the dead, were treated to scary special effects, and even traveled through time since the show covered three centuries during its run. <laughs> the audience feared the evil Angelique and the sinister Quentin Collins. They feared for the damsel in distress, Josette, and admired the mistress of Collinwood. But it was the vampire, Barnabas Collins, fans loved. When he turned into a sex symbol, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe what, what, what had happened to America, <laughs> what happened to me. It was a very strange phenomenon to me. Josette. Barnabas. I had to see you one more time. Oh, you come back. Stay there. I just want to look at you for a moment, and then I'll go. Because this show is live, um, or virtually live, and we didn't stop tape, no matter what happened, we never stopped. And we had dead bodies move. If the set had collapsed on your head, if you forgot lines, whatever happened, any special effects problem, we still went straight through as though it was a live show. First time, can I tell the story about the, the first time I had to bite the fair lady here? <laughs> and I came in through the French doors of her bedroom, and um, I learned later that you had to have, have that. You can't wear the fangs. You see, I couldn't wear mine because I was on a clock like this. So I had to have them somewhere on the set where I could pick them up and put them right in quickly. This time, I hadn't learned that, and I had them in my pocket. Well, they went in upside down, wrong way around. I was trying to juggle these fangs into position, and of course, couldn't. I mean, they were just hopeless. So I had to just chew them up and stick them behind my tongue, and then I went in sideways. And by the way, it was the best bite I ever did because it was subtle. Currently in syndication, Dark Shadows is terrifying a whole new audience these days. I think one of the reasons why the show has been so enduring is is because of the sense of fun that we had when we were doing the show. There was a real sense of family, an ensemble playing. Don't you come near me. I know what you are. I know what you are! I think that we had a, a terrific impact on, on some young viewers. Teenagers picked up on the excitement of the show and, and, these, and the special effects and the fantasy elements. I, I think that's why we were so popular with, with kids. And, you know, I still hear that when I... When I run into somebody who's an old Dark Shadows fan, invariably they say, oh, I used to run home from school to watch Dark Shadows. Oh, I don't want to be what you've become. I don't want that to happen. Please. I die before I'd let that happen. Oh. Ah! Yeah! Judy! Ah! Judy! <laughs> Judy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Lisa, you, you've really got me into it now. I'm, I'm completely all wrong. All right. Over. Well, you should be a new fan. It's great it's stuff. Good stuff. What happened to all those people? People want to know this stuff, so we have an update for you. Catherine Lee Scott, she's written a book called My Scrapbook Memories of Dark Shadows. Lots of good stories in there. Jonathan Frid mm -hmm. is touring the country with the production of Arsenic and Old Lace. Well, that was uh, really uh, what a great story, Lisa. My I pleasure, Rob. <laughs>